around our sanctuary. Good morning. We'll be bringing our message this morning. We're so grateful to have her here. I welcome all our visitors who are attending worship this morning. And now I'm going to have Dave come and speak to you. He has a very short announcement. As short as I can make it anyway. So uh, those of you probably know, we have a very, uh, very successful video uh, ministry um, working both inside the church and then outside as well, um, reaching out to uh, those that are shut in, can't make it, things of that sort, and those that are beyond the church. We are really in need of some help in our, in our video and sound technical department. Um, Doug does an amazing job every week, and uh, we have volunteers that come in, one particular in the contemporary service. We have a young man named Soren Ray. I don't know if, you know, you probably know who he is. He has been doing that faithfully almost every single week for the last two years. Um, it, it's a little bit more complicated than it used to be, but it's easier than you think. For those of you that would like to maybe help us out in that sound and AV department, I would love to hear from you. Um, there are weeks that things come up that, that we're kind of crippled a little bit and, and we're scrambling. So uh, it's just one area in volunteerism that you can be a part of, but it's one area that we have a, a really strong need right now. So uh, go on the church website, email me and say, hey Dave, that sounds like fun. <laughs> so that's all I have, thank you. announcements. You're all invited to join the Anna Circle this Thursday, October 19th at 1 o'clock in Faith Hall. They will be packing health kits for Church Women United. The next Fairness Awareness Program is next Sunday, October 22nd at 4 o'clock in Founders Hall. The Reverend Dwight Ford, Director of Project Now, will be speaking on the challenges of living in poverty. There is a free meal following that program. Contact Barbara Roseman or reach out to the church office to let them know that you would like to attend the meal. Um, and then, between services, Pastor Beansley will be bringing our message this morning for service, but then between services down in Founders Hall, she will be speaking to you about our transition time. As we prepare for worship, I ask you to stand as you are able for the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the wisdom from on high, our merciful judge and savior, amen. Let us bow before God in humility, confessing our sin. Generous and faithful God, we confess to you all the ways, known and unknown, in which we reject and undermine your steadfast love. Though you made us your people, we treat strangers with suspicion. Though you forgive our debts, we collect without mercy. We are quick to pass judgment on others. Have mercy on us, O God, and remember your promise to us. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of God stands forever. Through the living word, Jesus Christ, God forgives your every debt, your every sin, and gives you a new heart and a new spirit. Amen.
Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Lord of the feast, you have prepared a table before all peoples and poured out your life with abundance. Call us again to your banquet. Strengthen us by what is honorable, just, and pure, and transform us into a people of righteousness and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated.
First reading from Isaiah, the 25th chapter. O oh, you are my God, I will exalt you. I will praise your name, for you have done wonderful things, plans formed of old, faithful and sure. For you have made the city a heap, a fortified sin, city of ruin. The palace of aliens is a city no more. It will never be rebuilt. Therefore, strong peoples will glorify you. Cities of ruthless nations will fear you. For you have been a refuge to the peace, with the poor, a refuge to the needy in their distress, a shelter from the rainstorm and a shade from the heat. When the blast of the ruthless was like a winter rainstorm, the noise of aliens like heat in a dry place. You subdued the heat with the shade of clouds. The song of the ruthless was stilled. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make all for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wine, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained clear. And he will destroy on the mountains the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might serve us, save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from Philippians, the fourth chapter. My brothers and sisters, whom I have love and long for my joy and crown. Stand firm in the Lord in this way, my beloved. I urge Yuda and I urge Sinkich to be of the same mind in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you also, my loyal companion, help these women, for they have struggled beside me in the word, work of the gospel together with Clement and the rest of my co-workers whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there are any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, Think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen, seen to me, and the God of peace will be with you. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 22nd chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. 
And once more, Jesus spoke to them in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his slaves to call those who had been invited to the wedding banquet, but they would not come. Again, he sent other slaves, saying, Tell those who have been invited, Look, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fat calves have been slaughtered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they made light of it and went away, one to his farm, another to his business, while the rest seized his slaves, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burned their city. Then he said to his slaves, The wedding is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go therefore into the main streets and invite everyone you find to the wedding banquet. So those slaves went out into the streets and gathered all whom they found, both good and bad. So the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man there who was not wearing a wedding robe. And he said to them, friend, how did you get in here without a wedding robe? And he was speechless. And then the king said to the attendants, bind him hand and foot and throw him into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. It's a doozy of one. <laughs> good morning. It is so good to be with you today. I have been looking forward to this all week long. For those of you who didn't catch it, my name is Pastor Jen, short for Jennifer Beamsley. I'm an assistant to the Bishop for the Northern Illinois Synod. I come to you today to talk to you about your transition in between worship services and then again after our contemporary worship service this morning. It is good to be here because things have not gone as planned. I want to let you know a little bit about myself before I come and bring you a message this morning. I live and work out of Joliet, Illinois. And so along with the other assistants to the bishop and Bishop Stacy Fiddler, who says hi, by the way, we are part of 138 congregations in our synod, and some of us are remote. So although our offices are here in Trinity, I came from the east side of our synod this morning. I have been married to my spouse, Chris, for 30 years. No one is more surprised by that than we are. <laughs> We have recently become empty nesters. We have two grown children. Anna is married to Zach, and they live in Cedar Falls, Iowa. And our youngest, Cecilia, left the house last October and has not yet returned. And so we have turned into a new stage of our life as well. And so we spend our time when not working at the things we love, and I spend it in my garden or camping or taking trips with my husband, which you'll hear about in a second. I am deeply, deeply rooted in faith and at the same time seeking it out. I am a sister in Christ like you are my siblings, and it's so good to be with you today. Thank you. Grace and peace to you, my friends, from the one who is and who was and who is yet to come, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So today I want to talk to you about upendings. Have you ever planned for something so carefully only to have it all fall apart? Right? Several years ago, our family took this 10-day vacation that we had planned to Door County, Wisconsin. That is where my husband and I had spent our, our honeymoon. So we wanted our kids to enjoy the area as we had about 10 years earlier than that. There were so many good things about that vacation, and there were some very frustrating things about that vacation. And one of the frustrating things about that vacation was me <laughs> and i hate to admit it but it's true 
somehow I had gotten it into my head that the perfect vacation would include us staying in a cabin instead of a tent like we often did. Our children were at the age where they didn't like to be in a tent and I didn't want to hear them complain. But we were young and we were strapped for money. And so when I was on the internet, this new thing at the time that you could use to find places, I found this A-frame house within our price range and it was described as cozy and quaint and still available. And at the time, I didn't realize those were really code words for small and odd, and no one in their right mind would ever rent this. This is why it's available. But to me, in my young mind, I thought, oh, it will be perfect, a perfect place for a perfect vacation. So I reserved this little A-frame house. I paid the fee and off we went. But when we pulled into the shelter where we were to stay for 10 days, 10 long days, we were absolutely flabbergasted. It was indeed an A-frame shelter, but it was an A-frame shelter the size of a doghouse, a very small doghouse with cement floors and a bright, shining lamp just outside of the door. It had no window. It had four bunk beds that were attached to the sides of the house with these gross plastic mattresses on each one of them. It was damp. It was dark. It was absolutely miserable. <laughs> and we were upended. Life is full of upendings. Something happens to you at your work or your school or your marriage is thrown a curveball or something happens within your body or mind and spirit and you experience a disease that throws you off your mark. Families that get embroiled in conflict, your community or the things that you belong to suddenly take a turn and have unsolvable problems. You can't climb out of a financial hole. You are without a pastor for over three long months. Life is full of upendings. And man, does it ever throw us off. Because we like to strive for consistency and regularity, and we plan for it, and we count on it, because having a foundation helps to ground us. It helps us give us something to hang on to, because this life is unpredictable, and everything can be so very fragile and uncertain. And so when things don't work, when the things that you plan for simply do not happen, it is quite unnerving, it is worrisome, and it is difficult. Because we don't want to be upended, and yet it happens to us throughout our lives. No one wants to be upended, <laughs> and yet here we are today. Nearly 2,000 years ago, there was a deacon who stood up in worship taking out a sheet of papyrus, which is the ancient use of paper at the time, and began to read a letter from a pastor. You know the letter today as Philippians chapter 4. But for those who heard it for the very first time, for those who experienced it for the very first time, it was a lifeline. Because the little community in Philippi was having quite a time of it. Their pastor, Pastor Paul, was sitting in a jail cell housed away from those that he loved. He had been traveling around for 20 years in service to the gospel and the promises of God as they knew it through Jesus Christ. And you would think that would get him a nice relaxing way, and yet here he was. So that little worshiping community in Philippi, they did the best they could do in his absence. 
They didn't have a lot, but with what they had, they began to share it. They shared it with Pastor Paul. They shared it with the town that they were in. They shared it with one another. And it sounds all lovely. And it sounds like they had no problems at all. But time often softens the edges of hardship. It erases the intensity of it. It erases the anxiety of it. And if you read closely in the letter, you can hear how they were all upended underneath of it. Eudia and Syncate were stirring the pot. There was a church conflict going on. Paul writes to them to encourage them because their finances have tanked. The ministry of the church was changing. Everything that they knew was being upended by the culture that surrounded them. And they were in this dissonant time, and they didn't know what was going to go on. They were very uncertain about how things would turn out. So when they gathered for worship, and that deacon stood up in front of them and took a deep breath and began reading the letter from Paul, they were ready for it. They were ready to hear these words from Paul because Paul trusted that God was near. And Paul was telling them that even in hardship, especially in hardship, God would show up. And so he writes to them. He loves them. They're his favorite. (laughs) He says to them, my beloved, remember, let your gentleness be known to everyone because everyone's doing the best they can. Give all those worries to God. Because when you do, you will receive a peace that passes understanding. Paul said, don't forget, don't forget, don't forget to focus on what builds up the people of God. Using encouragement and humility and unity and joy. Because when you do those things, you are a reflection of the God that is already there. And that God is there alongside of you, rooting for you and showing up for you as you do the things that God keeps asking you to do. So stand firm, he says. Keep going. It's going to turn sooner or later. I was thinking this week about how so much of life is not really being able to see around the corner of things, isn't it? You can plan for a direction, you can plan for all sorts of things, but life happens to you along the way. And I was thinking about this last week when I was on a walk with my husband in all places in Door County, Wisconsin. We had made another trip out there. It's our 30th anniversary, so we're visiting places that mean something to us. It was a time to reset and connect, and so we decided of all things, to go for a walk in the woods. And it was there that I got kind of lost in my thoughts as they're rolling around in my head, thinking about all the things that we're thinking about these days. The war had just launched in Israel, and these horrific images were coming. I was thinking about my dear friend and colleague who just lost her son in a car accident about a week ago. I was thinking about you and what I might say to you today and how scrappy you've been and how faithful you've been and how disconcerting it must be to not know when or how this would all work out as everything else keeps happening around you as well. Now, I'm a person of faith which means two things are true of me at once. The first is that I deeply trust God. Deeply. I have always turned to God whenever I don't know what to do next. And then there's this other thing that's true about me. (laughs) My prayers often sound like, what are you thinking? (laughs) And when will you let me know? 
Perhaps this is how you feel as well about your own faith life. That when you cannot quite see around the corner of things, when you feel so small and things feel so big, that you're not quite sure what to think next. And so as I'm walking along and lost in my thoughts, my husband's behind me as is often the case, <laughs> bringing up the rear and also lost in his thoughts. And he said, what are you thinking about? And I was telling him all these things. And then he said, I said, I was thinking about that A-frame and how unnerving it was and all here we are now and all these things are happening. And then I said, and then I was remembering that vacation, the one thing that happened that was really wonderful. It was about day four. By this time, my daughters and I had turned on my husband, poor guy. And we went to bed early, and we put a little, put a little uh, space in there. So the girls had a section, and I had a section, and we were deep asleep, and it was midnight, and Chris woke us up and said, get up, get up, get up. We were whiny. We were cranky. We were very, very irritated at him. He said, I want to show you something. Get in the car. So there we drug our whiny selves into the car, and he drove and drove and drove into one of those little field driveways in the middle of nowhere that you can park your car. And we stumbled out of the car. We couldn't see a thing. And he said, oh, for goodness sake, just shut up and look up <laughs> in the sky. And there it was, the Milky Way the brightest thing I'd ever seen in my entire life. One of the top five Milky Way skies I've ever seen in the middle of Door County. I believe God gives us things in this world that we can hang our hearts on. There are things in this world that do not change. The steadfastness love of God the community that is like stars aligning, the way that we have been gifted with life and celebration and joy even when things aren't working out all the time. Things always turn. And when they don't, you have been given a gift. You are the body of Christ. You hold each other's worries, you hold each other's hopes. And no matter what happens and who wears the robe up front, that does not change. And you have been invited by God to say, okay, what's next and when? Because God welcomes these things. God plans for these things. God is waiting for our hearts to know that whatever happens, God is working on something and we don't even see it yet. Because we have a God who shows up, especially when we need it. We have a God who is making things new even when it looks old. We have a God who will hold us and give us the gift of community. So stand firm in the faith. Keep doing what you're doing. Let's work together. Because today, my heart's going to land on the faithfulness that we are being called to because the God that is full of that faithfulness is surely going to show up. Thanks be to God. Amen.
let us confess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father of Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Trusting in the transformative power of God's loving spirit, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Lord, we pray for this world. We can hardly comprehend the reports of violence and war which inundate us. Comfort those who are mourning senseless deaths in Israel, Ukraine, and Sudan, the streets of our own nation. Be with those recovering from earthquakes, fires, and natural disasters. Bring peace to your creation. God of grace, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for this nation. Noisy voices confound us with differing viewpoints. Artificial intelligence tricks us into believing things which are not true. Help us to hold tightly to your unchanging gospel of love and goodwill. God of grace, hear our prayer. Lord, we give thanks for your church and the faithful pastors who nurtured us in our youth, the pastors who over centuries have guided your church through difficult times. Bless our bishops, Elizabeth Eaton and Stacy Fiddler. We bless you for the diversity of pastors who have graced our pulpit and celebrated at this table in recent weeks. Raise up men and women to hear your call and serve your church as pastors and deacons. We remember before you especially Trey Graff, God of grace. Hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for Trinity Lutheran Church. Help us to remember that our time is not your time. Grant us patience to wait, wisdom to discern the Spirit's ways, and steadfast faithfulness in your word, even as the person whom you have chosen to tend this flock may already be journeying toward us. God of grace. We name before you aloud or in our hearts the saints whom we loved who now rest in your mercy. May we in our own time join with them at your heavenly feast. God of grace. Gracious God, into your hands we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your unending love and amazing grace. Through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Won't you share that peace with one another? God's.
please stand as you're able. Let us pray. Merciful God, your hand is open wide to satisfy the needs of every living creature. Grant us to be thankful for the gifts you provide and be faithful stewards of your bounty. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should in all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who, on the cross, opened his arms to all. On the night of his betrayal, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death and resurrection and ascension, we await his coming in glory as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Send your spirit upon these gifts of your church, O God. Gather into one all who share this bread and wine. Fill us with your Holy Spirit to establish our faith and truth that we may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ, through whom all glory and honor are yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. You may be seated.
Won't you please stand as you're able? There it is. May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen us and keep us always in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal God, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. You have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Grow in God. Care, care in Christ. Christ. Serve in the Spirit. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God.